Today is all about helping you practice and improve your listening skills. And you're going to do that to help you understand and build your vocabulary. So this is very, very useful. And if this is your first time here, my name is Wes and this is Interactive English, which is all about helping you practice and improve your English skills. And as I said, today is going to be a little bit of a listening quiz, but it's a listening quiz Whoops, <laughs> I, I, I messed up that slide, but it's a, to understand and new vocabulary. That's what it's all about. And I just love that picture. I thought it was pretty funny, so I put that in there. So we're gonna practice your listening skills today to help you understand new vocabulary. And I just wanna give a quick shout out. Thank you, hello, uh, Lolly, Mary, Ira, Angela. Um, Saya, Ernest, it's great to see you guys. I'm happy you were joining me for today's lesson. I did have, I don't know if you noticed, I had a little small minor surgery a couple days ago, but that's not stopping me from doing this lesson. I wanted to help you guys practice your listening skills. So it's, we hear quite often people say like, you know, I, I can, I, I have difficulty understanding TV, movies, perhaps fast conversations. And one of the problems is that you may come across a word that perhaps you don't know what this word means at all, or maybe you just recognize it and you're a little bit familiar with it, but you, you still don't know it that well. And when you start coming across those words in the middle of a conversation, it makes it a little more challenging to follow what is happening in the overall conversation. So today I wanted to practice trying to identify words that you may not know at all and, and really try to understand what they mean based on everything that you're hearing. So specifically what we're talking about is this. When listening, it's important to be able to understand words that you don't know. And you need to put these words in context. This is something that teachers, English teachers will tell students all the time. If you're listening, if you're reading a story and a student's like, well, I don't know this word. The teacher will say, try to put it in context. And context is talking about all, all the words that are around this one word. Because if you understand the situation and you understand all of the other words, then probably you will be able to put the unknown word in context and understand the meaning. So that's what we're going to do today is I am going to have you listen to different sentences and I'm going to take one word and I want you to put that word in context. Now, the words that I've chosen, some of them are advanced words, other words are, they are not common words. The, the reason is just, the, the reason I chose the word is just to practice this exercise. So I've chosen some words that I, I would say you don't need to learn these vocabulary words. It's just to practice to see if you understand the meaning. So let's just go ahead and get into it. And of course, if you guys are with me right now, I want you to write the meaning of the word in the chat. Even if you're watching this later, it's interactive English. It's all about interaction. And I want you to use the comment section, use it like it's a piece of paper and write your answers in the comments. So I'm gonna tell you a sentence, all right? I just want you to listen carefully. That's all you need to do, okay? Are you ready? All right, I'm gonna say the sentence twice and then I will show you the word. All right, so here is the sentence. Just listen carefully, all right? Here it is. Dark clouds surrounded us. It was a perilous journey and few survived. I'll read that again. Dark clouds surrounded us. It was a perilous journey and few survived. All right, so what I want to know is, what does the word perilous mean? All right, maybe you know this word, all right? Because this is a word you, uh, you might hear from time to time or maybe you might read it, so perhaps you already know. But just listening to what I said, what do you think is the meaning of this word? I will read it one more time for you, ready? Dark clouds surrounded us. It was a perilous journey and few survived. Okay, so what does this word mean? What do you think? Write it in the chat. Write the meaning of the word and, and, and try to think about it. So again, the, the first steps I would take when you're listening to something is I, I talked about a perilous journey. So right then you know it's an adjective. 
It's describing this journey, this trip. So then you need to understand everything around it. I start out talking about dark clouds. Okay, dark clouds. Is that a friendly picture or is that maybe like, ooh, okay, it doesn't look good. And then at the end, I say few survived. So if few people survived the journey, then yes, all right, it's probably talking about something that is full of danger or risk. Excellent, had some great answers in there. Thank you. Yes, Albert, uh, Gertrudis, Ladan, Juan Carlos, um, uh, Roland, excellent, that's fine. Bad is also great, Lali, Aya. Uh, so yes, if, if you listen to that, all right, that statement, and you're, you're listening to a conversation and you don't know the word perilous, you can put it into context and, and you know, okay, it means danger, all right? Full of danger or risk. Now, when you do this, you don't have to have an exact meaning, all right? As long as you kind of understand and get an idea as to what the meaning of the word is, you can still understand the overall main idea, the overall conversation, and that is the most important thing when we're talking about your listening skills. Are you ready? All right, the next, the next one is, I want you to listen carefully, all right? I'll read it twice, and then I'll show you the word. Are you ready? Um, the next one is, she's banned from the library because she's a biblioclept, and she cannot be trusted. I'll read that again. She's banned from the library because she's a biblioclept and she cannot be trusted. All right. You're probably hearing this and you, you probably know the word that I'm going to show you. And whoops, no, that's not the word. The word that I want to show you is biblioclept. So after listening to that, what do you think it means? What is a biblioclept? Okay, I'll read it one more time and then I want you to write your answer. What do you think is the meaning of this word? She's banned from the library because she's a biblioclept and she cannot be trusted. All right, so <laughs> yes, I think one thing that, that I think you know, if you know different um, prefixes and suffixes, some of you might see that word klept and you think, oh, I know what it means, uh, a klept. So, Klept is, again, if somebody's banned from the library, it just means they're banned. They cannot come to the library. They can't be trusted. Well, why? Because if somebody is klept, then it, it has to do with stealing. So a biblioclept is someone who steals books. Excellent. Uh, uh, Katarina, um, Adavisic, Albert, uh, perfect. Uh, getting some great answers. Habib, yes, a thief is worked. But again, uh, think about it in general. If you want to be more specific, a klept, a biblioclept, someone who steals books. All right, excellent. So this is what I want to practice today is just listening for something and then I will take one of the words and I want you to, to see if you can identify the meaning. All right, so today, if you're just joining us, we are practicing listening skills and trying to identify new vocabulary. Are you ready? The next one is the following. Are you ready? Here, I want you to listen carefully. All right. <laughs> uh, the baby defecated again. Whose turn is it? <laughs> All right. If I said, oh, the baby defecated again, whose turn is it? All right, so just thinking of that example, all right? The baby defecated again. Whose turn is it? What do you think that word means, defecated? And again, I'm using this because my wife and I, yes, that is our baby girl, um, Amelia. <laughs> she, is, she is the love of our life. But if somebody were to say that, okay, oh, the baby defecated again, whose turn is it? What do you guys think uh, I'm talking about? This is a word that m some of you may be familiar with already, all right? Um, <laughs> Artem, my turn, yes. I will, we will absolutely let you have a turn. So if somebody if, is talking about, oh, the baby defecated again, to defecate, because we're talking about a baby, is just to poop, or you could say to relieve oneself. There are many different phrases or words that you can use when talking about pooping. And one of those is defecating. Um, so perfect, yes, Lolly, Ulyssa, Junior. Um, 
<laughs> Manola, I'm eating, bro. Sorry about that. Sorry if you're having uh, some food. Uh, Amakar, yes, great answers. Thank you guys for answering. But to defecate means to poop. So let's just move right along, all right? The next one, I want you, again, listen carefully, all right? So the next one that I have for you is, you know, I have taught some recalcitrant students in my time. Some of them I tried to work through the issues and others I just didn't have the patient for, patience for, all right? This is a little more challenging. I'll read that again. I have taught some recalcitrant students in my time. Some of them I tried to work through the issues and others I just didn't have the patience for. So what, what does it mean if I'm talking about the word recalcitrant? All right, what do you think that means? Uh, I'll read it one more time. And this one I, I do think is a little more challenging. All right, I want you to listen for it again. I have taught some recalcitrant students in my time. Some of them I tried to work through the issues and others I just didn't have the patience for. So if we're talking about somebody who is recalcitrant, I think more or less, all right, um, you can kind of get an idea that it's not a good thing, all right, because you're talking about a teacher working through the issues and maybe some of them like, yeah, I don't wanna deal with it. So we're talking about, you could say a bad student, a stubborn student, you could put it into context and you know that it's something that is negative. Now, again, if you wanted to take this word and say, well, this is a new word for me. I know it's a bad word. I know it doesn't mean something good that if somebody, if you refer to them as recalcitrant, but it means that somebody is defiant of authority. It is a difficult person. So this is a situation when you have a person in authority, like in a classroom, a teacher, or perhaps at work, a boss, and you might have a recalcitrant employee, somebody who defies authority and they are therefore difficult to deal with. So I saw some great answers. Um, Ahmad, like disobedient, that's a good one. Angela, rude, Chris, rude, perfect. Um, you could say Fulia, stubborn, perfect. I think many of you said, um, so you said like rude, uh, bad, exactly. So I think all of those, it, it, if you hear this, then you would understand the meaning. Oh, okay. You're talking about a student that, you know, is not good. They have problems. But specifically, again, this is what the meaning of the word is. Boom, right there. It is somebody who is defiant of authority, recalcitrant. All right. So um, that I, I want to just let you guys know, if you guys like what we do, if you enjoy our lessons, you can check out our Patreon page. We have some cool rewards there. It's just another great way to connect with us, to show us some love for, for what we do here at Interactive English. I just threw a link there in the chat um, if you want to go check that out. All right, so let's, let's continue. As we go through these, they're going to become a little more difficult. All right, so the next one that I have for you, again, I want you to listen carefully, all right? Listen carefully to this statement, all right? The next one is this one. Many of you compliment me for my lamprophony. You can understand me, but you may have difficulty with TV shows or movies, all right? I'll read that again. Many of you compliment me for my lamprophony. You can understand me, but you may have difficulty with TV shows or movies. All right. I think you probably know. All right. The word that I want to know is what does it mean? Lamprophony. Now, this is not a common word. This is not a word that uh, I'd say, oh, go out and learn this word and try to use it. This is, this is specifically for this exercise to see if you can put this word in context. I will read it one more time. And this is true. A lot of you would, would say this to me and you'd say, well, you don't say lamprophony, but you'd say, many of you, you compliment me for my lamprophony. You can understand me, but you may have difficulty with TV shows or movies. So what do you think it means if I'm talking about lamprophony? You compliment me for the, on this, on my lamprophony. But some of you may say, ah, oh, but I have difficulty with TV shows or movies. So this is, this is very, uh, I think, very applicable because today we're practicing our listening skills, all right? So um, I think, excellent, all right? See, this is great practice for, for some of the, what you guys are putting down. I love some of these answers. Um, like Yousef said, eloquence. 
uh, hop to pronunciation. Coding is talking about articulating. Um, Gertrude's pronunciation. So yeah, you, you guys are on the right track. So if somebody is talking, I'm talking about my lamprophony, it's talking about, well, two things, loudness and clarity of voice. So I would say that all of those answers, if you talked about enunciation, the clarity of voice, it does have to do with pronunciation, the way that I speak and the way that I pronounce my words. So this is specifically what it is because I am kind of loud, especially when I'm talking and giving these lessons. Loudness and clarity of voice is lamprophony, but many of you, you're able to put it in context because of this situation. You compliment me and say, oh, Wes, I understand you, but when I'm listening to a TV show or movie, it may be a little more difficult, all right? Excellent. Let's go to the next one. Are you ready? So listen for the next one, here it is. I want you to listen carefully, all right? If you're just joining us, we are practicing our listening skills and putting words into context to try and understand new vocabulary. So listen carefully, and here we go. So I'd say, we could hear the hullabaloo in the third grade classroom next door. Perhaps the teacher was out of the room. I'll say it again. We could hear the hullabaloo in the third grade classroom next door. Perhaps the teacher was out of the room. So if somebody's saying this to you, all right, I, I want to know, what does it mean? Uh-oh, wait, not this one. Here we go. Hullabaloo, all right? So you heard that sentence. This is the word I keep doing over here. This is the word that I want you to identify, hullabaloo. I will read it one more time, see if you can listen for that word, put it into context of what's around the word. We could hear the hullabaloo in the third grade classroom next door. Perhaps the teacher was out of the room. All right, what do you think it means, hullabaloo? Excellent, uh, seeing some great answers. So if, again, you could put it into context, a third grade classroom. If the teacher's out of the room, well, probably the students are going to be noisy. So a hullabaloo is referring to a loud noise, a lot of commotion, all right? The teacher's not there, so there is a lot of noise. Excellent, but I like the answers. Lucky, Lucky Jim, noise, perfect. Um, yeah, Rodrigo, a racket, which is also a loud noise. Excellent. Um, Angela, Sarah, a fuss. Sure. So all of those words are applicable. You can hear that and you understand the meaning of hullabaloo. Now, the next one, are you ready? We're going to keep going. Listen carefully. What do you think? Um, this is a conversation between two people. All right. The first person says, why do you look so woebegone? And the other person says, well, I just returned from my grandmother's funeral. Why do you look so woebegone? I just returned from my grandmother's funeral. What do you think it means if somebody is woebegone? All right, you, you can, I think the context is a, a little easy. So I tried to choose words that I don't think you know, and this is not a common word whatsoever but I tried to give you a little bit of an easier context to follow so you can say, oh yes, I can listen to it and identify it. I'll read it again, one more time. Why do you look so woebegone? Ah, I just returned from my grandmother's funeral. What do you think it means? Somebody is woebegone, okay? So uh, yes, excellent. You guys, you guys are rocking this, putting these words into context. And again, this is great practice for your listening skills. So again, if we're talking about somebody who is woebegone, it's an adjective, and it just means, yeah, somebody is sad, that they appear, they look sad, all right? They, they appear woebegone. Somebody who just returned from a funeral, they're going to look very sad, their appearance. They're gonna, oh, you know, it's not a good event. So I think if you said, you know, some Ahmad, dismal, um, you know, El Mustafa, sad, perfect, lolly, um, Melon, uh, uh, you said a little distraught. Yes, all of that works, all right? Somebody looks woebegone, all right? They sad in appearance. Let's do another one. Are you ready? I want you to listen carefully to the following, to this one. Um, oh, 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 I should tell you, all right, with this one, um, with this one, it's a little longer. I'm going to choose two words. Okay, I'm choosing two words that I want you to identify, and I will show you 
um, both of those words as well. All right. Are you ready? I want you to which which one did we just do? Uh, hullabaloo. No, we did. Wobegon. OK, let's do the next one. All right. Listen carefully. We're on number 20. My boss is a real curmudgeon. I felt I prepared adequately for my presentation, but my boss said I was a bunch. I was saying a bunch of gobbledygook. He yelled at me because he claimed I didn't make any sense. All right, I'm gonna read it again. My boss is a real curmudgeon. I felt I prepared adequately for my presentation, but my boss said I was saying a bunch of gobbledygook. He yelled at me because he claimed I didn't make any sense. All right, so there are two words that I want you to think about. All right, what do you think it means? What is a curmudgeon and what is gobbledygook? What do you think? I will read that again because those are two words that, again, they're not very common words. It's not something, these are not words that you're going to use every day, but it's good to listen for it. See if you can put them into context. All right, I'll read again. My boss is a real curmudgeon. I felt I prepared adequately for my presentation, but my boss said I was saying a bunch of gobbledygook. He yelled at me because he claimed I didn't make any sense. So in this one, I'm trying to make it a little more challenging to see if you can identify two meanings, all right? What do those words re mean right there? What is a curmudgeon and what is gobbledygook? So uh, seeing some ideas, <laughs> well, like no idea, all right, exactly. Um, picky, okay, maybe. So I, I think you can say like some of it, uh, I think some of you are answering some and not the others. If we're saying my boss is a real curmudgeon, all right, he yelled at this person. Really kind of just, you know, maybe they got angry for no reason. So if somebody is a curmudgeon, they are a bad-tempered person. And they, they said that they didn't make any sense. He was saying a bunch of gobbledygook. This is more like almost a bit of slang. If somebody's like, if you're listening to somebody and it's just a bunch of gobbledygook, yes, it is unintelligible nonsense. Or you could say like, nor perfect, nonsensical. It doesn't make any sense. Um, you know, a curmudgeon is the son of a bee. Sure, yeah. Uh, many people might think, yes, that is a curmudgeon as well. Lolly, cranky is somebody who's bad temper. That works as well. Perfect. So again, somebody is a curmudgeon. They are bad tempered. They easily lose their temper. And gobbledygook is when you're talking about you're listening to somebody speak, if you're hearing something and it's like, I don't understand this, it's just a bunch of gobbledygook. Yes, Albert, like babbling, all right? Somebody's babbling, you can't, you don't understand it, you could say it's just, it's a bunch of gobbledygook. Are you ready? All right, the next one, again, I want you to listen. I'm going to take two words out of this and you need to try to identify those two words. Are you ready? Listen carefully, here we go. Even after observing the mayflies for hours, he was still flummoxed by their behavior, and their ephemeral lives meant he wouldn't have much longer to study this group. I'll say it one more time. Even after observing the mayflies for hours, he was still flummoxed by their behavior, and their ephemeral lives meant he wouldn't have much longer to study this group. Okay, so this, I think it's a little more challenging, can you identify the meaning of those two words, all right? Flummoxed and ephemeral, all right? L if you listen to that, what do you think is the meaning of those words? Let me, I'm gonna read it again. Are you ready? Listen carefully for those words. Um, I'd say, even after observing the mayflies for hours, he was still flummoxed by their behavior and their ephemeral lives meant he wouldn't have much longer to study this group, all right? So I chose that picture. That, that is a picture of a mayfly, if you don't know. To be honest, I did not know what a mayfly was either, all right? So if you're talking about um, somebody, he was flummoxed by their behavior. Excellent, see some good answers. Yes, um, Divyanga, Junior, Junior, you just rocked both of those, excellent. So he, their ephemer, he was flummoxed by their behavior. He's like, hmm, I'm a little flummoxed by that. I just gave you a hint if somebody's flummoxed. And the last part was their ephemeral lives meant he wouldn't have long to study the group. So in that case, all right, flummoxed. If somebody is flummoxed, they are confused. They are perplexed, all right? 
So you might be flummoxed by some situation. You don't understand what's happening or why it's happening. And if something is ephemeral, it just means that it is lasting a short time, very short lived. All right. So we talk about their ephemeral lives because if you didn't know a mayfly, it only a mayfly only lives for, I think, a few days. So they have a very, very short lifespan. So in that case, that the person wouldn't have much time to study um, what's happening with these mayflies. So I hope that, again, I put that reading up there so you can kind of read it and try to get an idea as to the context, the meaning of those words. All right, let's, uh, let's, do, uh, let's do another one, all right? Again, just want you guys listen, listen carefully. Here is the next one, all right? What are you doing? I want you to stop lollygagging and finish your chores. Then make sure you wash your hands before our repast. <laughs> All right, I will read that one more time. All right, what are you doing? I want you to stop lollygagging and finish your chores. Then make sure you wash your hands before our repast. All right, what do you think these two words mean right here? Um, lollygagging and repast. Uh, again, I would say um, lollygagging is more, I think it's kind of a bit of a slang um, term that's more popular in the U.S. People might say lollygagging. It's not super common, um, but you, somebody may hear it. You may hear it watching a movie. Repast is a word that I don't think is very common uh, as well. So again, let me read it one more time. And now you know the words that I want you to identify. See if you can put them in context. Somebody would say, what are you doing? I want you to stop lollygagging and finish your chores. Then make sure you wash your hands before our repast. All right. So I think the first one is you can kind of understand that. Um, what are you doing? I want you to stop lollygagging and finish your chores. If you know that chores are things that you have to do around the home, then that's work you have to do. So if somebody's lollygagging, yes, Mr. Reluctant, they're wasting time. Um, Ibrahim, yeah, you could say they're fooling around. Alberto, waste time. Um, Onesem, acting goofy, sure. They're lollygagging. They're, I, I like to say the phrase, dragging their feet. If somebody's dragging their feet, it means they are wasting time because they don't want to do something that they need to do. And they'd say, ah, oh, you know, I'm really dragging my feet. But you could say more informal lollygagging. And the next one I want you to put in context, make sure you wash your hands before our repast. When would people tell you to wash your hands? They would say to wash hands before you eat. So yes, excellent. So to, to repast is talking about Ahmad, yes a feast. It is talking about a meal. Some of you uh, got that one as well. Uh, atavistic, perfect. So again, you guys were able to listen to those words. What are you doing? I want you to stop lollygagging, wasting time, and finish your chores. Then make sure you wash your hands before our repast, which is our meal, which is dinner. I think most of the time repast is used to refer to dinner. And I think it's more of a I'm not positive. I think it's more of a religious word, maybe a religious context. I'm not sure about that. But again, it's it's not a very common word. People would just say dinner, supper, a meal, a feast. There are many words that somebody would use. But the whole idea behind this is that if you are uh, listening to a conversation, the next time you're watching a TV show or movie, and you hear a word that maybe you are a little familiar with, or maybe you don't know at all, just try to put it into context. Try to understand all the words that are around there. Put a picture in your head so that you know, okay, this is what the word means. Now, this is, this is, what I, th this is great practice for trying to continue doing this, for actually improving your listening skills, as well as maybe learning some new words along the way. So I hope you guys enjoyed this listening practice uh, and trying to identify new vocabulary words and put them in the context. If you like this lesson, please, I would really appreciate it if you hit that like button down below. Stop lollygagging, stop lollygagging and go ahead 
and and hit that like button. And of course, I hope all of you enjoy your your repast tonight. I know that uh, you know <laughs> I'm I'm trying to make sense. I'm I'm not trying to be. I'm trying to remember the words that I I had from from this lesson. Um, I'm trying not to speak a bunch of gobbledygook. All right. So I, I'm I again. I'm really glad that you guys. Hopefully you understand uh, what I'm saying because of my lamprophony, all right? My enunciation, my voice, all right? That was a quick little review uh, of some of the words from this lesson. Thank you, guys. Thank you, um, Ira, uh, Tactic, um, Kanani, sorry if I mispronounced names, Judith, uh, Sanaz, Rosalinda, Ulyssa, Fulia, Mary, Junior, Artem, uh, Miss Reluctant, thank you guys so much for joining me today. I hope you have a wonderful day. And also, check out our social media classes. We're active on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. We try to be everywhere, all right? And we try to create a hullabaloo wherever we go and help you guys practice and improve your English skills. And as always, just write to us in the comments. We love hearing from you. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. And okay, that's enough. I've, I've, I'm dragging this on. I will see you guys next time. So long.